name is Grace. I am the Outreach Coordinator for NAMI Texas. I work closely with Barbara Vinson, the Affiliate Leader for NAMI Guadalupe County. Um, and we've been working together for the past couple of weeks to organize this meeting. So thank you all so much for being with us tonight. Um, so tonight's meeting is intended to help the community of Guadalupe County get to know NAMI and NAMI Guadalupe County, the services and resources that they currently provide and have the potential to provide. Um, and we also just want to brainstorm with you guys on how collaboration between other organizations and agencies and members of the community can come together to help end the stigma of mental illness and bring more mental health resources to the community. Um, tonight's meeting is going to start with a message from NAMI Texas Executive Dir Director Greg Hanch. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and hand the mic over to Greg. Hey everyone, good evening. Good to see you all. Um, thanks for taking the time this evening uh, to be part of this important meeting. Uh, we, you know, at NAMI, uh, we as mental health advocates, we as people whose lives have been affected by mental illness have a responsibility and an obligation to, to be there for others and to provide support, to provide education, to provide advocacy. Um, we know the importance of those efforts because we ourselves are people whose lives have been affected by mental illness. Um, and there may have, it depend, everyone has a different story and everyone's story is, you know, unique. Everyone's story is, has value. Um, but for a lot of us, you know, our story consists of, you know, something along the lines of, I didn't get what I needed, either as a family member or as an individual. The system didn't serve me in the way that it should have. And that's why NAMI was created. It was created to create a fairer and more equitable system for people whose lives are affected by mental illness. And, you know, we won't get deep into the, into the weeds of NAMI's history but um, we know the, the bottom line is we know the importance of being there for others because we ourselves either had people there who were there for us or didn't have people who were there for us. And it sure would have been helpful to have a resource that we could lean on uh, when times got hard. Um, so, I, you know, it's just really inspiring to see NAMI Guadalupe County doing what it does uh, to see, you know, Barbara and the other uh, members, uh, volunteers of NAMI Guadalupe County working so hard to be there for the community. Um, and, you know, I am, you know, very much of the opinion that we're early on in the history of NAMI Guadalupe County. And there is a long way to go. There is a lot of potential. And uh, this, you know, does have the potential to grow into something that is really uh, prominent in the community. Um, you know, I, we want, when people think of mental health and they're in Guadalupe County, we want them to think of NAMI Guadalupe County. And to, to some extent, that's already the case. Um, but I think if we work together, and we, we reach out to our friends and our family members and, and business leaders and community members, you know, we can build this into something that um, has a deep impact and, and, and that is sustainable uh, in, in for many years to come. Uh, and, you know, you'll notice that I'm using the terminology we um, it, despite the fact that I am not, I'm not with NAMI Guadalupe County, Grace is not with, you know, NAMI Guadalupe County, Patty, who's a, uh, our pro, the, the NAMI Texas Program Director, is not with, is not a member of NAMI Guadalupe County, but I still use the terminology we because um, NAMI Texas and NAMI Guadalupe County are uh, partners in, in the truest sense of the word. Um, we uh, have a, an agreement with NAMI Guadalupe County that NAMI Guadalupe County will operate 
as a Model B NAMI affiliate, um, which could be characterized as another way of saying what a Model B affiliate is, is that NAMI Guadalupe County operates under the official um, umbrella of NAMI Texas. NAMI Texas is the fiscal agent of NAMI Guadalupe County. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to say, it, there was an interesting discussion actually earlier today among the NAMI state organizations it's asking our Model B affiliates programs of NAMI state organizations. And to, to me, NAMI Guadalupe County, a, a Model B affiliate is not a program of uh, of the NAMI state organization, but it, it is a, in a, a partner of the NAMI state organization. And a lot of what we do at NAMI Texas is intended to help and support NAMI Guadalupe County and the other Model B affiliates in any way that we can. And it's, it, it's, a, it, it's an arrangement, the Model B structure is an arrangement that can be very effective because it allows NAMI Guadalupe County and other Model B affiliates to focus less on the behind the scenes minutia of operational responsibilities and more on programming and outreach and advocacy. You know, those are the programming and outreach and advocacy are the endeavors that will make the deepest lasting impact in, in the community. Um, and because NAMI Texas has a, an established infrastructure uh, in, in the sense of we're, we're a nonprofit organization, we have uh, financial management processes and systems, we already have those things in place. So yeah, thank you for, for advancing the slide. It, it, the, you know, from our perspective, why not let NAMI Guadalupe County and the other model B, B affiliates utilize what we already have in place so that uh, they don't have to think about so much about the behind the scenes minutia. They can focus more on, uh, you know, programming, outreach and advocacy. Um, and, you know, th those are things there is uh, always going to be behind the scenes stuff that has to take place in order to make the programming and outreach and advocacy happen. There has to be coordination within NAMI Guadalupe County. There has to be leadership within NAMI Guadalupe County. There has to be people who are uh, willing to work out the, the logistics of mental health programming, of mental health outreach, mental health advocacy. And that, that you know, that sort of minutia is not a NAMI Texas responsibility, that, that is still a NAMI Guadalupe County responsibility. Where, where NAMI Texas comes into play is uh, providing, you know, being the fiscal agent, uh, providing assistance with, um, you know, website development, web page management, uh, setting up social media pages. You know, we can help with, with those types of things, but at the same time, there has to be leadership on the other end within NAMI Guadalupe County to, to make these things happen uh, locally within the community. In other words, we need leaders in from NAMI Guadalupe County to be boots on the ground to pull these important things off. And, and you know, it, we, Patty will talk more about this, but it, it's clear what the value of education, support, and advocacy are. But it, just in case it's not clear, we're going to provide a background for that. Um, but you know, one I think one of you know my main goals in this meeting would be for everyone to be bought into the concept that mental health education, support, and advocacy led by peers and led by family members is an absolutely vital vital service that needs to be made available to everyone in Guadalupe County who needs it. We want to make sure that we're reaching as many people as we can. Um, the me peer and family led mental health education support and advocacy cannot be replicated by any other service with or within or outside of the mental health system. So that's why we need to, to be doing this work. Um, so, you know, a lot, you can see the, on the, the screen here, like model B structure and sort of what that is and what the benefits of it are. Um, and, you know, if anyone has any questions about this piece, I'd, I'd love to, you know, take those. But 
NAMI Guadalupe County has been operating as a Model B affiliate for, you know, a, a couple of years now, right, Barbara? And, um, you know, it, it seems to be working well. It seems to be a good fit. I think, you know, based on conversations that, you know, we've had with, with Barbara and with others, I think, you know, we need other people to kind of step up and be willing to volunteer their time to help pull some of these things off when it comes to education support and advocacy. And I think that's, you know, let's utilize the Model B structure and format to get to where ultimately we want this initiative to go, which is reaching a broad range, a broad and diverse range of, of individuals and families with our, our, you know, signature mental health education support and advocacy efforts. Um, Grace, do you want to flip to the next slide? Ah, I'm on. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Absolutely. Take it, take it away, Barbara. Okay. So, um, it says we became affiliated in August 2018, so I'm going to tell you how we got there. Uh, and my, I had to have six people <laughs> on a leadership team to even get started with the NAMI Gualapik County B model. But um, to back up a little bit, I moved here in 2014 and I was still with NAMI Austin or NAMI Greater Central Texas, and so I'd been with NAMI, and when I finished my board there, board term there, I said, wow, NAMI Guadalupe County doesn't have anything. And this is, NAMI Guadalupe County needs to know, this is not just my issue because I have a son living with the disease of bipolar. This is a community issue. This is something that everybody needs to get involved with. So I um, started the, uh, January, 2018, how do I get started with the affiliate B? What do I need to do, you know? And uh, so I started speaking anywhere and everywhere. Of course, I went to Rotary Clubs, went to Kiwanis Clubs, uh, went to the library and uh, speaking about what is NAMI and awareness and that I was bringing it here. And uh, then I got to thinking, my God, goodness gracious, I need um, funding. <laughs> I thought, you know, you got to have beautiful fly flyers. They cost money. Um, you got to have uh, beautiful pamphlets like bipolar. What's what is bipolar? What is mental health? What is schizophrenia? With beautiful stickers on the back. Um, so I really had to to get moving because I said, man, we can get affiliated in August, but you don't have money. We we can't do anything. So that's basically how we got started and I got six people on my team and we came up with our mission statement. NAMI Guadalupe County is committed to providing education, advocacy and support to families and individuals affected by mental illness. And we went for it. Next slide. So we've had a lot of accomplishments and I know you can read that. I'm very proud of what we did in a very short time. Um, we did a lot of contacts and from those contacts during the next couple of years, we did a lot of partnering. So there were programs that I could give to the police department, to the sheriff's department. Uh, Navarro ISD contacted me, my own church, uh, Seguin United Methodist Church had me come do something. Uh, we started community meetings. Uh, I got an office at the Emmanuel's Lutheran Church. Um, we. I did um, some partnering with Blue Bonnet, who I work with their counselors now. We did a CASA event. Uh, we started a NAMI Connections program, uh, the support group, NAMI Connections support group, which um, is for individuals living with a mental health um, condition. And my church offered a space. And so we started that. And um, next slide. Then unfortunately who came COVID <laughs> but we had a little leeway there so in January of 2020 we had done so well 2018 2019 doing our outreach and talking and partnering with people we decided my leadership team got together and said let's do a huge mental health fair a lot of 
uh, NAMI A, you know, big affiliates that I was associated with in Austin. You know, we did a huge NAMI run and all that kind of thing, NAMI walk. Well, I knew we couldn't do that. <clears throat> so my leadership team got together and we said, we'll have a mental health fair and all these resources that we're connected with and ones we're not, we'll go to them and say, hey, let's have this huge mental health awareness festival in Seguin Central Park. I got, and let's make it a family event. And I got vendors to come. I got the blow up jump place to come, jumping for joy. I got a petting zoo. We just went all out, got singers, all kinds of things. So we really worked on that January and February and then boom, COVID had to cancel it. So I thought, oh, I'll move it to September 19th, 2020, <laughs> which is coming up guys, which got canceled again. But so that being said, we took a little bit of the back seat. And so in that May, what we did instead was um, my affiliate team, one of the members, she and I put green bows all around uh, the Seguin Square and uh, in the trees and everything. And then I put pamphlets out, these wonderful pamphlets that I have. And about 60 of them were taken. And I put them in little boxes on the corners. And uh, we also gave out masks. I had ladies, I found green, Kelly green cloth. And we, some ladies made these masks for me and I gave them out for free with a little filter. And then I gave a flyer to about 60 people and for them to learn about NAMI. Then we had to uh, go, we're going to have to reevaluate ourselves. You know, no, there had been no meetings. There had been no NAMI connections, uh, in-person anything. Next slide, which leads me to um, what we currently do offer. We put the NAMI connections support group, have a great, beautiful flyer about it, uh, online, okay? And transferring that to Zoom, as so many people are doing, uh, meetings and had to kind of get trained. How do you do that? How do you get the slides up? How do you get all of your information up and got another person trained at the end of June? And uh, I also got a person trained to do the uh, NAMI uh, uh, Support group family support group and uh, She and I did it once uh, we're going to start it back up again so um, Slowly we had to change ourselves and evolve into how are we going to keep this going? My next thing is, so we haven't been really, truly real successful with this on Zoom, but we're just going to have to keep plugging and talking to people about it. And I want to start our general, as you can see on the right hand side, the upcoming events. Um, I want to start general meetings again. You know, I had to cancel some really good people last spring. I want to, um, reconnect with them and see if they're willing to either videotape themselves or do live on Zoom and start having Zoom meetings. Uh, and as I get, and it's again, keep up these support groups that I have. I had a organization contact me that wants to help NAMI, just out of the clear blue. And the leader is named Patricia Coe and she wants to have a drive-by mental health event. Well, <clears throat> I got a no from several different people and um, Patricia kept persisting on about this. And so as of this past Friday, one of the city councilmen members called me, Chris Aviles, I think, and said, I want to help you get this done. And I know someone at the American Legion and we are going to have you a mental health drive-by event. So that was very pleasant news. So we will be working on that. And of course I will need volunteers. I will need people to help us come up with some creative ideas because I want to give out things to kids, make it a, a family event, <clears throat> whether they drive by and open their trunk or whether they actually get out and walk by tents with social distancing. Uh, I want to do something like that uh, to let people know that we're here. Um, the next thing is I know for um, schools and things, they're, they, uh, they're having a really difficult time with how they're educating and what's going on and kids with anxiety and different things going on. And so possible programming that I can do for some school districts outreach is parents and teachers as allies. And um, it's a great program and I did it for Navarro ISD. I can do it for Seguin ISD. I can do it for some of the private schools. 
um, where I go in and speak and I have a parent speak about their child that went through school and someone, a young student living with a mental health condition comes and speaks. Um, ending the silence for families. I can talk to family members. I know they have a lot of kids that maybe didn't have anxiety and they do now, whether it's I'm afraid to go to school because of COVID or I've heard this or I've heard that. We can also do an ending the silence for teachers. So those are possibilities of things that I would like to partner up with a lot of schools and let them know that we're out there and um, are willing to help. Um, next slide, please. So how to get involved. Uh, I need a lot of volunteers. I can lead all I want to, but if there's nobody behind me, I'm not getting anywhere. <laughs> and um, I need people, I come up with the idea of uh, sitting in the office, like I said, I have an office. I have air conditioning now, which believe it or not, I did not have, which made it hard to go up there, but I have air conditioning now uh, in Emmanuel's Lutheran Church. Um, I need people just to organize. I need the people to file when I get these in, keep track of my flyers, put stickers on my flyers, lovely NAMI flyers. Uh, I need people to make phone calls and say, hey, we're just checking in on you. How are you doing? To my community members, not necessarily uh, our, our uh, community email people. I have a lot of people on my email list, but are not necessarily NAMI um, members yet, you know, and they keep in contact. Um, I need people for um, outreach, you know, who do we need to go to and when can we start putting flyers like this in a doctor's office or, or YMCA or wherever, you know, uh, and how many do I need? Uh, fundraising, you know, uh, anybody that wants to get involved to help me with fundraising, uh, making connections with other um, agencies, nonprofits that you might know of, tech savvy people that might help me set up uh, some systems to manage our growth, our accountability for what we do on a spreadsheet for us. Um, uh, you know, and I just want to partner with anybody that I can and be a resource to the community. So someone calls me and says, you know, I need help with whatever it might be. I can say, oh, how about calling these people? They help with finding a housing or they help with jobs in addition to if they have a mental health condition. I want to be able to partner with people and give all kinds of resources out. So volunteers are something that make an organization. And I can't tell you, I need a lot. And I need a lot of young volunteers like at TLU. Uh, I have partnered with TLU and I did get two young students and of course COVID hit. And so I'm still uh, talking with one of the counselors out there to see if I can get some young students uh, to help me. Uh, what else? So let's go to the next slide. So we have a Facebook account. Grace helps me with that. Another one of my uh, leadership team members, Donna Fagan, helps me with that and keeps it up. We actually have a website and it's on my little lovely NAMI Guadalupe County brochure. Uh, I also send out emails uh, on my list. I, I think I have about 55 people that I email, but they're not all members, but they stay in contact. They've had some of my classes. They want to know what's going on. Um, so um, you can um, call me. There's two numbers. The last one, the 512-585-8968 is my cell phone. I will always answer that and I do not mind talking to you. I don't. The other one is the uh, NAMI number, the 830 number, and I, I'll probably have to get back to you on that. Um, that's actually a house phone number, uh, but you can always email me uh, this NAMI email and I will get back to you. Uh, but so my question to the community is later on, you know, think about this where you might fit in or where you might know somebody as you're sitting here listening to this go, oh, wow, I know somebody that wants to get involved with um, NAMI or mental health or, oh, I know someone that's struggling out there. We all know someone if we just think about it and tell them to call me, email me. I'd love to get them hooked up, tell them what resources we know about and maybe they would like to volunteer, you know. Um, Patty's going to kind of tell you um, 
our educational coordinator, you know, now that we've had COVID, how you can, people out in the community can also um, take educational classes or be involved through NAMI Texas with different classes that I usually send out on my um, emails also, but um, she can tell you a lot about how that works. So I'm gonna let Patty take it over. So my name is Patty Haynes and I'm uh, the NAMI Texas Program Director. And I'm very appreciative that you all have come join us tonight. Uh, we talked a little bit uh, about education. Of course, Barbara mentioned some of the, the programs already available um, through her affiliate. But as we all know, that education is an essential part of the understanding and coping with mental health conditions. It's very important not only for the family member, but also for those with a mental health condition and uh, community members. So NAMI Texas local affiliates provide numerous education programs addressing the many needs of our different constituencies. So we have different programs. We have um, NAMI, pro we have programs for family members and friends. And the first one is a NAMI Family to Family. It's a free eight week education course for families, partners, and friends of individuals with a mental health condition. And this series of weekly classes is structured to help caregivers understand and support individuals with a mental health condition while maintaining their own uh, well being. The course is taught by two trained family members who know what it's like to have a loved one struggling with one of these brain disorders. We have NAMI Homefront, and this was developed to meet the unique needs of families of service members and veterans who live with a mental health condition. This is a free six-week session. It's adapted uh, from the evidence-based NAMI Family to Family program. And it is also taught by family members who have a relative with a mental health condition. Um, this is also not only taught in person uh, through the affiliate, but NAMI National provides an online um, a virtual class uh, quarterly. And uh, they offer it in four time zones. So you can choose whatever uh, time you wanna take this class and it is a live class. Our NAMI Basics, this is a six week education program specifically for parents and other caregivers of children and adolescents who have either been diagnosed with a mental health condition or who are experiencing symptoms but, not, um, but have not yet been diagnosed. Um, it's also caught, taught by trained teachers who are the parent or caregiver of individuals who develop the symptoms of a mental health condition before the age of 13. We also have NAMI Basics On Demand, where um, it is a recorded uh, basics class and um, you can join and um, watch it. Um, any time of the day, it's, it's, it's available to you 24 seven. So you can start it and end it. Um, although it's a recorded uh, class, it's the same, same basics class as an in-person or an online class, uh, but it also has a parent blog. So you can go in and um, reach out to other parents through the blog. Partnerships. Uh, this has been designed to be used in a variety of ways. It can be used as a standalone self-help guide, um, as the basis for a group book discussion and family members live, um, and also for those who live in a rural or isolated areas and do not have access, ask access to the NAMI groups in their community. You can actually purchase this um, book online on amazon.com. Some of our programs for individuals living with a mental health condition we have peer-to-peer -peer, and this is a free eight-week peer-led recovery education course open to any person with a mental health condition who wants um, to you know live well in their recovery of course they have to be 18 and older and the course offers a comprehensive understanding of mental health conditions with topics ranging from stigma to relapse pre pre prevention and advocacy and much more for community groups, we have uh, family and friends, 
and this is a four hour or 90 minute seminar that informs and supports people who have loved ones with a mental health condition. Participants learn about diagnosis, treatment, recovery, communication strategies, crisis preparation, and NAMI resources. Seminar leaders have personal experiences with a mental health condition with their within their families. Um, this also, when you uh, register for this class, you will um, be directed to a free um, ebook of this course with a lot of resources. NAMI Inner On Voice. This is a unique public education presentation that offers insight into the hope and recovery now possible for uh, people with a mental health condition. To train individuals with a mental health con condition lead a brief yet comprehensive interactive presentation about mental illness. The presentation includes a video, their personal testimony, and a discussion between the presenters and the audience. The testimonies put a face on mental illness while informing the audience of how people with a mental health condition recover and reclaim their protect, uh, protected lives. And of course, this is um, presented in a 40 minute, 60 minute, or a 90 minute presentation. Bridges the hope. Because religion and spirituality often play a vital role in healing, it's not uncommon for families and individuals experiencing mental health issues to turn to a faith leader first for help. Yet faith leaders, staff, and key outreach volunteers often uh, lack the information and education and resources. Therefore, we have um, a program that um, will bridge, bridge that hope. So it's a three-hour mental health training featuring an informative overview of prevalent mental health myths and common symptoms of mental health disorders, along with simple ideas for building bridges to hope for your faith community. We have uh, NAMI Smarts for Advocacy. It's a hands-on advocacy training program that helps people living with a mental health condition, friends and family, transform their passion and lived experience into skillful gra grassroots advocacy. NAMI Smarts for Advocacy is designed as a series of three one to two hour workshops or modules, or as a single full day training that develop the following skills, telling a compelling story that is inspiring and makes an ask in 90 seconds, writing an effective email, making an elevator speech and making an impactive phone call or orchestrating a successful meeting with an elected official. We also have support, uh, support groups, and we provide regular support groups for individuals with living and mental health condition and for family members and others. So your family support group is a peer led 90 minute support group for family members and loved ones of individuals living with a mental health condition. Family members and friends receive support from each other by sharing their experience, strength, and hope while caring for a loved one with a mental health condition. NAMI Connection Recovery Support Group. This is a 90-minute recovery support group for people living with a mental health condition in which people learn from each other's experiences. They share coping strategies and offer each other encouragement and understanding. For professionals, we have NAMI parents and teachers as allies. And this is an in-service training for Texas teachers and school professionals, helping them to recognize and identify early onset mental health conditions in children and adolescents. The presentation is conducted by parents and individuals with a mental health condition who've had a um, had to negotiate um, mental illness within the school system. So our, our young adults that are in recovery, you know, they share their story of what it was like being in high school and living with a mental health condition, what they went through. We also have um, ending the silence, and of course, both of these. Barbara had mentioned earlier. 
Tsunami Ending the Silence, this is an in-school presentation about mental health designed for middle and high school students. The goal of the presentation is to, rare, is to raise awareness and change perceptions about mental health conditions. And also to end the silence and stigma surrounding mental illness. It's presented in, usually in freshman and sophomore health, science, or psychology classes, because it's only 15 minutes. Uh, the program is delivered by two, uh, it's a two person team, one of whom is a young adult living in recovery with a diagnosable mental health condition. Students learn symptoms and indicators of mental illness when the warning signs. They also learn how to help themselves and their friends or family members who may be, be in need of support. Once the program is completed, handouts are sent home to parents informing them of the program. So we want the parents to know that their children are learning about mental health. Um, Any of the science is also now available for teachers and parents. So we have three different programs. We have NAMI Provider. And this is a 15 or four hour in-service training to line staff at public mental health agencies. It's taught by a trained three to five member uh, team, uh, family members, individuals with a mental health condition and a mental health provider who is either a family member or an individual with a mental health condition of recovery. And this course emphasizes the lived experience of mental health conditions, which prepare staff members to practice collaborative consumer, provider, and family treatment team model of care. Right now, because um, we are not meeting in person, these um, programs can be um, provided online. NAMI Texas has, um, is now offering uh, the support groups online. We have uh, the family support group, the connection support group. I'm working on um, starting up a family support group for parents with children and adolescents that have a mental health condition. I'm also working for uh, with a connection support group for the LGBT community. Uh, community. Uh, we've offered family to family online and we've offered peer to peer online. We have several affiliates that are offering even more. They're um, offering uh, the different presentations, the ending the silence, um, in our own voice. And the nice thing is um, the majority of the affiliates throughout Texas are more than open for anyone to join their programs. And if you were to go to um, the NAMI Texas website um, under the online programs, you can see the list of different affiliates that are offering programs along with how to get onto our programs. Thank you, Patty. You're welcome. We have a lot of programs out there and I think sometimes they're just underutilized. People don't know that they're there, you know. But I am very appreciative of everyone for joining this meeting and for your interest in this affiliate. Um, Barbara, thank you for everything that you do in helping organize this meeting. Um, and I'm just really encouraged and inspired by this turnout. And um, yeah, I, I'm optimistic with where this group is going for sure. Okay, thank you so much. And thanks for everybody that came on. And uh, like I said, put your thinking cap on. Everybody knows somebody email me, let me know any little thought, idea uh, that you have. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.